Welcome to the second episode of the podcast. It was Wayne's World podcast last week. Now, thanks to some college friends, Ned, Mark, Rick, renamed for this week. It is the wide world of Wayne. And as usual, we're talking about Maryland sports. And there's no Maryland sports more worthwhile talking about than Maryland Penn State on Friday night. This is the game. It's a rivalry game. It's been one of the biggest games of any year that Maryland plays Penn State to me. It is the one game that can make the season for the Maryland Terrapins. Now, over time, hasn't quite worked out to our advantage. Only having two wins and a tie in the entire history of the rivalry. So maybe for a Penn State person, it's not much of a rivalry. Penn State leads the series 38 two, and one tie. I was there for the win a few years ago at Happy Valley, one of the best wins I've ever been a part of, and I was there for the tie in Memorial Stadium, a 13-all tie back in the 80s, and quite frankly, that felt like a win. So on today's episode of Wide World of Wayne, we're going to talk a little more about the Penn State game, talk very little about the lacrosse fall ball has started and we'll have Bruce Posner on to talk about his thoughts about lacrosse and the history of this rivalry with Penn State. We'll be back in a moment. The Wide World of Wayne is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. For all your computer needs, websites, inventory systems, point of sale, Viner Four Gates is the place to go run by Terps, staffed by Terps. If you're a Terp and you need IT, go to Viner4Gates.com. You can reach Viner 4 Gates at 301-251-2900 or on the web at oneviner.com. That's one, V as in victory, I-E, N as in November, E-R.com. Now on this rivalry, this Penn State game, I think it's a good thing the game's played on Friday night. Penn State's played about 27 other games on Friday night. I actually don't remember Maryland playing on a Friday night. I saw the other day that there are two to 300 tickets left. I was out at the stadium on Tuesday, saw the bleachers up. It's a beautiful sight. You know the place is going to be packed. It's going to be rocking. I've heard from Maryland fans who are going to be out there at 2 and 3 o'clock which is five or six hours before the game kicks off at 8 o'clock. Uh, Mason, the young Terp, the former intern, he's coming in, flying in from Jacksonville just to go to the game, and you'll see him on the post-game show on TerpTalk.com. It's just such a big day for me. It's a, it's a big day for me because this is the one team I want to beat. It's the only rivalry left that we have in College Park, moving out of the ACC into the Big Ten. There weren't that many football rivalries. We all know about the basketball rivalries. But if Maryland can get competitive in this game, this is going to be Maryland's rivalry game. So you look at the action on the field, and that's going to be one thing. Maryland uh, open as an 8.5 point underdog. The number has gone down. I think it's around six right now. And the game is one thing, but everything else, the recruiting, the prestige, whether or not Maryland can stand toe to toe with the number 12 team in the country, all of that's riding on this as well. There's a set of expectations that Loxley has this program in College Park going the right way. The best way to prove it is to beat Penn State. Loxley and James Franklin coached together. They were the two coaches that Ralph Fregen held over from the Ron Vanderlinden staff when he came here, when Fregen came in. They say they have a cordial relationship. I asked Loxley if this really felt like a rivalry game and about the buzz on campus on Monday, which was yesterday. Here's what Coach Loxley had to say about that. I know it's just the next game. But with the extra bleachers out there and it being Penn State week, is there any buzz on campus? Are the guys any more jacked up? 
than usual? Does it feel like a rivalry to you guys? I mean, we haven't been on campus. I mean, I, I'm stuck at Gossett, so I, I don't know what the buzz is. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do, Wayne, is to just really insulate ourselves to functioning and worrying about the things we can control. You know, all the things you just talked about are things that are out of our control. It's great to hear that hopefully we'll have the, the type of crowd that our players uh, deserve to have and that I know our fans are excited about this game. But for us, all of our focus is on being the best version of Maryland football that we can be come Friday and all the external noise and all the external uh, excitement about this game. You know, we're looking at it no different than we've looked at the other three opportunities that we've had, and that's just how we approach the game. So that was Coach Loxley saying it's pretty much just the next game. I don't really believe it. I think there's something special in this. The first game Mike coached when he came back to Maryland as the interim head coach, replacing Randy Etzel, was that 31-30 loss to Penn State in Baltimore. Great game. Very exciting game. Hate to say a game you lost is a great game, but that one will go down as a really good Maryland effort. Before that game, Mike got all choked up, and this is his dream job, and he knows because he's been here. He knows this is the rivalry game. He knows these recruits are at stake when you play Penn State. He knows what the real deal is, but he answered that very well as a head coach should. Now, why is it good that it's Friday night? As I started this segment with this, it's good that it's a Friday night game. You can't get as many people here on a Friday night, you hope, from the visiting team. You know that in a normal year, more than half of the crowd seems to be for Penn State. So I am hoping that enough Maryland fans turn out, that that early season buzz that sold the extra tickets that pushed this to a sellout game, that got those 15,000 students to sign up for tickets, so they had to put bleachers up to accommodate the students. I hope all those students come. I hope they stay. I hope this is a Maryland crowd and it's loud all night, no matter what. However it comes out, this should be a lot of fun. After the game, you'll be able to hear me on 105.7 The Fan and Sports Talk 980, and now also on FM 95.9. On with Mike Popovic after the game, so that's after Johnny and the guys wrap up the post-game show. I should be on late night on Friday. Then you can hear me on the Sports Maven Saturday morning, 9 o'clock on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. And one other segment in there, our post-game show, the Big Dog post-game show. We'll be live from the field. We'll have Bruce. We'll have Mason. If Maryland wins, we'll have tons of guests. And if Maryland loses, I can't wait to hear what Mason has to say. We'll be back in a moment with Bruce Posner talking about the actual game and what he saw at uh, the fall ball open practice for lacrosse yesterday. This is Wayne Viner, and you are listening to the Wide World of Wayne on the Red Turtle Production Network. All right, we are back here. We're rolling on pre-Penn State week. We've got Bruce Posner on the phone. Bruce, thanks for joining us this evening. And we're getting ready, uh, of course, to uh, do the Coons Ford Turp Talk Show tomorrow on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. We'll have a lot more on the game. So welcome in, Bruce. Always great to be with you, man. And it's not a favor. This is part of the game, man. This is part of the action. And... Uh, it's showtime tomorrow night. Is that the best way to put it? Yeah. Well, we got showtime tomorrow. Then we have an off day, and then it's Penn State on Friday. So we were just talking I'm off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, Friday. My bad. Right. So we were just uh, talking uh, off ahead. the air about the Penn State quarterback, Sean Clifford. He's uh, ranked fifth in the Big Ten as far as yardage. Do you have any early word on what you expect to see out of him? Well, I look at his stats, and they've played a pretty decent schedule, relatively speaking, okay? I mean, they played Buffalo, and they uh, a good team, and they played, it must be the year for the Buffalo, huh? Okay. And uh, they played Pitt, who really uh, defeated UCF, so they've got a couple good non-conference wins. Right. And, then and they the quarterback is six TDs, I think, and zero interceptions. 
Well, that always impresses me. Always. Yeah. So, uh, but who knows? We don't know anything about him. I've never seen him play except for a few minutes on TV. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where he stands tomorrow in a real hostile environment. Yeah. And the the big buzz out of Penn State on the off season was that twenty one kids left, including Stevens, who was the running quarterback. Uh, he made several appearances in last year's Penn State season. He was supposed to start, and he leaves and goes with Joe Moorhead down to Mississippi State. So Sean Clifford comes in as the quarterback. Defensively, Penn State's keeping people uh, bottled up as far as the running game. They're averaging about 70 yards a game on defense, where Maryland comes in just flying uh, a couple hundred yards on offense. Now, yeah, they got bolstered by the big wins over Howard and Syracuse, but even in the loss last week, Maryland could still run the ball. Do you think the Maryland run game is going to make it through this Penn State defense? Listen, it's made it through everybody, especially at College Park. I mean, well, the way we ran through Ohio State's unbelievable, and if McFarland gets the step. I talked to a couple Penn State fans, a couple guys who really followed closely, and they're, they think Maryland's going to run through them. And, uh, you know, Penn State hasn't faced a really great rushing offense yet. And uh, Maryland has that, and Maryland has the depth. I mean, they cut, they go at it for four quarters. Do I think it's going to be like three and out for Maryland on the run game? Never. And, uh, look, Josh Jackson's got a lot to prove. He's the – of all the transfers, he's like the sixth rated. And they said by the end of the year, he could either be in the top three or he could be in the bottom 15. And I think that it's, uh, what do they, we call it? It's judgment day for him uh, after a poor performance against Temple. Uh, it's judgment day on Friday for uh, Josh Jackson. And, and according to what I've seen and what I've heard and reports from you, don't look for Piggy in the red zone. Now, sometimes you get that answer and it's a total fallacy. But, you know, I said to you after the game against Temple, They've got to get some mobility inside that ten yard line, and who you know, Piggy is mobile. I mean, you can say whatever you want about him. You know, he might not have, you know, real quarterback uh, superiority, but he's mobile. There's no doubt about it, and he's got a decent arm. So uh, it's great to have two quarterbacks, and I think I think he'll be utilized. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, what do you think, Wade? I think that Mike called him a healthy scratch against Temple. He only got in for two plays. When Mike talked about that in the press conference, and the entire press conference is up on TerpTalk.com, he said, Josh Jackson is our starting quarterback. And that sort of ended all the questions about what they thought of Piggy. Piggy looked good. We saw him yesterday while we were waiting uh, for the lacrosse uh, fall ball event to get started. And he looks like he's moving well. We saw him in practice. He's throwing the ball well. So I think if Piggy is needed, he's going to play. Now, Maryland lost their special teams ace, which was Jake Funk. He blew out his left knee again, second time, same knee. Uh, So he's out. But coming back on the field is one guy that Mason loves, which is Lolo Harrison, a tailback out of DeMatha, who's really been on the shelf for about a year. First of all, what kind of player did you have Jake Funk rated as? He was a kind of glue guy on the team. Reminds me of like Patrick Ricard on the Ravens, or I can't name that guy on the Redskins or whatever. But uh, he's just the kind of guy who can do it all. He could, he probably could play defense if he had to. But he returned kicks, he blocks, he's on special teams, he tackles. He he he's a guy who's so crucial to the success of a team because he's not going to get a lot of headlines. But you and I both know, and Jake Funk's. I'd like to run his uh, his history in Maryland as to his average rushing per you know per time he handles the ball. I guarantee it's not that bad. Oh, I and think, I think that I think, I think he's, that he, he's been a big asset. Yeah, I think he's probably at seven yards a carry, and he scored a lot of touchdowns per touch, per catch. Yeah, I mean, and... it's like he reminds me a little bit of that Shane Cockrell kind of guy who could do it all. All right, he could like he can. He could play anywhere. He's a footballer. He's a he's a guy born with that football in his hand, and he is just uh, he's a winner. And it's a big loss to Maryland 
because he's the intangible guy. You know, he's a guy if you kick away from uh, who's ever returning the kickoffs or, you know, it winds up in the hands of Jake Funk. And you and me both know that a great return from him, it's not a surprise. Oh, no. You know, you're not like, oh, my God, Jake Funk did that. No, Jake Funk can play football, and it's a loss. It's a loss of depth for the Terps. Yep, and I think you're going to see Lolo get some of those speed carries to get to the edge. He might be the X factor when you get down to the goal line. Of course, that's why they play the game. We'll have to see. Uh, Maryland's defense, pretty good against the run. They've given up too many deep passes. You've watched football for years and years. How do you get better at stopping the deep ball? Well, you know what? It's all about talent. It's all about coaching. It's all about, you know, do you play the zone? Are you in the right place? Do you have good communication in the back? Uh, it's a million ways, but it really comes down to talent. And Maryland secondary is supposed to be pretty good. And I thought they got uh, torched a little bit against Syracuse, even though it wasn't a game. And then once again against Temple, they got beat a little bit. And, and they weren't going against the uh, uh, Jalen Hurts of the world. No. And... And I just was a little disappointed. But you know what? You know, Mar at the end of the day, Maryland's two and one. All right. And this is their first conference game. We got nine conference games. And I think there's, uh, I would hope there's a goal to go four and five or five and four would be unbelievable. And if you look at the other teams, it's there. It's definitely there. I mean, Michigan State has struggled. Michigan, they looked horrible against Wisconsin. I mean, Ohio State's still Ohio State. There's no doubt about it. And uh, Rutgers. Rutgers is not real good at all. And Indiana, you know, yeah, they beat UConn by a lot, but you're not scared about playing Indiana at home. So there's a lot of possible wins on this schedule. I mean, not to go 8-4, and four, but certainly to go 6-6 six and six or 7-5. and 6-6, and 7-5 uh, six, would be fine with me. It's still early in Penn State week here on this Tuesday. Uh, what's the line right now? I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't know, but I'll look at it in a second as I talk to you. Uh, I, you know, it's something I normally look at before the show, which we'll talk about right. tomorrow. But without looking at it, my guess would be Penn State 4. What would you think? 4 or 5. 4 or 5. All right. Now, so... with that being said, as I'm looking it up, and we can talk about other things. I guarantee it's probably tighter than that. Go ahead. All right. Well, we're going to pick this game um, tomorrow night on the uh, Terp Talk show brought to you by Coons Ford, and we'll have that up on uh, terptalk.com probably immediately after that, either later on Wednesday or early on Thursday, so we'll make our game picks there. Let me go over to Fall Ball Lacrosse. You had a blast yesterday. You got to see all your peeps uh, you led the press conference, as you usually do, with the questions of John Tillman. What's your takeaway as Tillman starts his ninth season in College Park? Okay, Penn State's a six-point favorite, okay? And uh, that's about what, you know, a little bit higher than what we expected. Uh, money line is two, uh, five to two, and Maryland, you get two to one. I think it's a great Maryland play, but anyway... You know, as always, you're impressed with Tillman. But I funny thing, you and me were watching the beginning of fall ball, and I'm not sure they could have beaten Mason's high school team all right, last year. And so I went up to Tillman after practice as we were leaving, and I said, hey, coach, it's a little rough out there early. He says, well, I'm going to tell you the sad thing. It wasn't the walk-ons making those plays. It was the starters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw you, you know, I saw you when you went to the car. I didn't really – come up to you but you were on the almost on the bench at the lacrosse practice i was at football what was the view from the coach's bench there as that practice well as went? practice as practice went on that first team started to play some ball all right i mean you know you could see logan was now bubble was playing out of his mind and jared Ber jared bernhardt looks like he put on 30 pounds or something 30 pounds of muscle anyway yeah. I thought he looked fantastic. And uh, I think the takeaway from the game, I mean, from the practice yesterday, uh, was the birth of the four horsemen. And what do I mean by that? The four captains of the team, Wayne. I'll let you tell everybody who they are. And uh, I think this is a strong, strong combination. All right. Well, that picture is up on TripTalk.com. 
from left to right across your radio dial. Number two, Bubba Fairman. Number 12, Logan Wisnowskis. The vaunted number one jersey is Jared Bernhardt. And back to wearing number eight is Mr. Do-It-All, Roman Puglis, who plays a little bit of defensive midfield. But when he gets the ball on the run, he is an offensive force. Do you think they picked the right four guys? Without question. Uh, without question. There's, a goalie would normally be in that group, but any goalie that starts this year is uh, kind of making his debut, per se. And uh, do we think that uh, – it sounds like Drew Morris might get the dot at this point, but this is awful early. I mean, this is awful early to even say anything like that. But that was just a gut feel, and I know that he loves this kid, McNanny, you know, Logan McNanny. I think that's his name, the one we interviewed on Turf Talk. Right. And, uh, you know, you look around, and this is just even in practice. These guys walk around with an air of inevitabil inevitability. Do you, you get that feeling? Like, here oh. we are. It's time to go to business. It's time. This was a tough practice. And... Nobody's shook. Nobody's playing around. Everything's serious. Everything's rah rah. Tillman and JL and Rapper are barking orders out. Jesse Bernhardt is out there too. And uh, he almost has three head coach caliber guys running that team. It's not an accident, is it, Wayne, that they're always in the hunt? No, it's not. And I'm not sure what to call this team. You'd call them a blue blood. But they don't run it like that. This is sort of like the blue-collar version of a blue blood. These are a, It's just a tougher team. How, how do you describe that? That's a good way to put it. In fact, if you notice, Tillman was uh, talking a lot about the, the whip snakes and how that Terrapin attitude carries through and how all the, all the defensive guys and all the other guys are so happy to play with each other. And that's what it's like. Uh, you look at Maryland starting attack this year, which most likely will be uh, uh, Bernhardt, Jets Jared Bernhardt, and Logan Wisnowskis, and Anthony DeMaio, and you just see power there. And isn't is it, is it always like that, you know? And isn't there always a guy like Bubba uh, Fairman on uh, the midfield? I mean, you go back to Connor Kelly, who really made his, made his name as a midfielder, not as an attackman. And you just, you know, it, it would shock me if Bubba turns into a tackle next year when Jared leaves. But uh, it's almost like you always have that, that long pole midi that's great. And you're always covered with three or four face-off guys and two or three possibilities at goalie. And how about our long poles? Are they always not there? Last year was Curtis Corley. Who knows who it will be this year? But we don't want to think somebody will blossom up. It's never an accident with Maryland. He just he he rebuilds right away every year. I think and... the rebuilding is done while the, it's going on. He's rebuilding the plane while he's flying it. The next guys are already here. The recruits are already here. The feelers are already out for the next number one class. He's bringing in a number one class in the country this year, but Tillman can bring in the number one class in the country again next year as well. This guy knows how to put teams together. And well, you saw a couple. You saw a couple uh, upstate New York recruits there, with their parents and everybody. And you could just tell if the offer came, these guys are coming, yeah. right or wrong. I In think, other words, I think we are know, in the golden age again of Maryland lacrosse. And as we uh, wrap up this wide world of Wayne podcast, I'm Wayne. That's Bruce. Uh, please remember to listen to us on the radio on 1300 CBS Sports Radio for both Turp Talk on Wednesdays, the Sports Maven on Saturdays, and during the NFL season, as long as the Ravens are playing in the nest on Sundays at 9 o'clock. Uh, so we'll cover all of this in more depth and talk a little bit of NFL with Dennis Kulatsis uh, tomorrow night on Turp Talk. Bruce, I think that'll do it for tonight. Thanks for joining in. Hey, Wayne, how'd you like having the roles reversed tonight? It was pretty fun, wasn't it? It's fun, yeah. We, we do this every every different way, and it's going to be great when we have Mason coming back for the postgame show, win, lose, or draw against Penn State on Friday night. It's going to be a classic. Yeah, something tells me that uh, we'll be there till 2 in the morning if we win. 
Maybe later. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you all a piece of the goalpost if we win. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the radio.